This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. The next sheet, he could ask you to value debt. Now, I do, before I give you this sheet, I do need to remind you of a few things. I said earlier, a small company borrowing money has as much choice. They've got, really, if they want to borrow money, you know, debt borrowing, all they can do is get a loan, whether it's from a rich friend or relative, or whether it's from the bank. All right? There's not much else you can say about that. However, large quoted companies can issue traded debt. Uh, and can I just remind you of a couple of things? Uh, traded debt has various names. In the exam, it'll either be called debentures, loan stock, loan notes, or bonds. They're all the same, whichever he chooses to call it. The different names for the same thing. All right? Um, secondly, oh, God, he's always mentioning trade in debt, always. It's every exam, there's something about it. Um, secondly, um, the, way they issue, the, the, the way they raise money, um, instead of just going to you know, one bank and borrowing 20,000 or something, they, here, uh, it's when you're borrowing large amounts. I might be wanting to borrow a million, and instead of finding one person to lend it, I advertise bonds or whatever for sale, just like shares. They're offered for sale in units. As far as the exam's concerned, it's units of $100 nominal. They sold just like shares. I say I want to uh, raise a million. Fine. Uh, they'll be offered for sale in units of 100. And just like buying shares, uh, Innocent might buy five units and lend me 500. Zana might buy 1,000 units and lend me a lot more. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah, units of 100. Uh, as far as the exam's concerned, they carry fixed interest. On the nominal value. So I might offer 8% bonds. It means if you buy them, you'll get 8% a year fixed interest. Uh, they're repayable on a fixed date. And specify when I raise the money, I might say uh, they're 8% bonds repayable in 2011. You with me? They're repayable on a fixed date. Uh, two things about repayable, though. They're either repayable at par, and if you're totally repayable at par, it means each unit I borrow a hundred, I pay interest each year. At par means I then repay a hundred, and so par means repay a hundred. Occasionally, though, you see them repayable at a premium. And it's better by example than words. If I say they're repayable at a premium of 10%, it 
It means you're told when you lend me the money, if it's 8% bonds, you'll get 8% of your interest. If they're repayable at a premium of 10%, it means that I'm promising to repay you 110. So you have lent me 100. There's a way of getting you to lend me the money. I'm promising to repay 110. Okay? Almost there, just two more lines. Uh, in the exam, fairly often you get what we call irredeemable um, bonds, debentures and things. If you ever see the word irredeemable, irredeemable, it's minor here but it's a huge, in, the important tomorrow, the cost of capital. Uh, irredeemable, the word redeemable means repayable. If they're irredeemable, then they are never repaid. It doesn't happen in real life, but it does in exams. If you lent me, if there were 8% irredeemable bonds, you lent me the 100, you'll get $8 a year interest forever. I'll never repay. Clear? So in real life, they're always repayable. In exams, you get both. Uh, it'll make a huge difference. And finally, the reason we call them traded debt uh, is that traded debt, they're issued just like shares, units of 100, but instead of getting dividends each year, you get fixed interest and then repayment. But just like shares, uh, these units are traded on the stock exchange. And so just one last thing, no more words here. But if I told you... Suppose I said with 8% bonds, 2015-84. Well, the terminology means, and he tests you on the terminology. That's how they appear in the stock exchange list, you know, where they give the share prices and things. Yeah. Uh, eight percent is the interest rate on nominal. That's also called the coupon rate. Each unit, remember, is a hundred dollars. If you buy one unit, you'll be getting eight dollars a year interest. All right. Uh, 2015 is the date of repayment. So again, if you buy one unit, you'll get $8 a year interest a year until 2015. In 2015, it would then be repaid. Finally, the 84 is the value on the stock exchange. For, I keep saying, the units are always units of a hundred. Just like shares, the market values keep changing. We'll talk about why in a minute, I'll show you the rest of the numbers. But, if you want to sell it on the stock exchange, as I say, some days it might be worth 84, other days it might be worth 120 or something. Doesn't matter. You can be asked to work out a value in a minute. But uh, for the moment, that's just terminology. And so if you've lent me the money, you can either keep it, keep the bond in 2015 and earn interest. If for any reason you don't want to wait till 2015, you sell your unit on the stock exchange. And whoever buys it, they'll carry on getting the interest. 
2015, they'll get the Okay? How about that sense? But he does test you on the terminology. And he tests you on valuations. So almost on a sheet. The valuation of the trade debt. Anyway, valuation of debt. Uh, number one, D has in issue 8% irredeemable debentures. I've already told you, doesn't happen in real life, but only in exams. Irredeemable means never repayable. Uh, we want to know the market value. Well, I've told you that in units of Andrew Nominal, we want to account the market value of one unit. With me? Just like shares, the market value depends on the returns the investor expects. With shares, it's dividend, here it's interest. And the rate of return investors require. Uh, you must learn, then you can cope with anything, that for debt, the market value on the stock exchange is the present value of future expected receipts discounted at investors' required rate of return. You must learn that. Because although from our first example, you could get the answer a different way, in general terms, you're going to need that rule. There isn't a formula here. The first one is a very easy one. But let's do it. Uh, they've got an issue, 8% irredeemable debentures. The required return is 10%. If they ask for a value, always do it for $100 nominal. If you had $100 nominal, if you had one unit, um, what a receipt do you expect? Surely you'll expect interest each year. Uh, it's 8%. That's, as I said before, is the coupon rate, interest on nominal. You will expect interest of $8 per annum. Everybody? No problem. Here, they're irredeemable. And I said irredeemable means they're never repaid. And therefore, surely, you'd expect $100 a year forever, one to infinity. Okay? The market value always will be the present value discounted at the investor's required return. For whatever reason, investors today want 10% return. Maybe banks are paying 10%. The market value, we simply discount for 10%. Bless you. One more bit of discounting. Who can remember? If you're discounting for four or five years, you've got your tables. If it's an annuity, you've got your tables. It's very rare you've got one of these where it's forever, or you should know it's a perpetuity. Well, come on, whether you were here before or you weren't, it's the one bit of discounting where you've got to learn the rule. What's the discount factor, please, for a perpetuity? Thank you, Innocent. If you haven't learned it, do. It's very rare you come across it in the exam. But if it's one to infinity, the discount factor in general terms is one over R, where R is the interest rate, the discount rate. And so here, we're discounting at 10%. 1 over 10% is 0.1. We always write it that way. You always multiply by the discount factors in general terms. And so the present value, 8 divided by 0.1, is 80. There is the market value of that unit on the Tell me. 
Why may be the case in three months' time? Why might the market value be different in three months' time? Go on, think. There's going to be loads of this. This is general business knowledge. It isn't learning. Why in three months' time might the value of that bond, of the venture, whatever it was, why might it be different? Why might it be higher? Why might it be lower? Yeah, because require returns change. Surely, whatever happens, you buy this. You're, the interest rate is fixed at eight dollars. You'll be getting eight dollars a year forever. But in three months' time, interest rates may have they have fallen. And if general interest rates have fallen to all four percent, if you can get four percent from the bank, surely if you were thinking of buying this bond. To get the, the, the price of the to pay, you discount at four percent, and the market value would be different. Tell me, if the interest rate, if required returns were lower at four percent, would you expect the market value to be higher or lower? If I told you, in three months' time, investors only require a four percent return, what would happen to the market value of this? Second, increase. Yes, it would. Think about it. Don't change yours. But if interest rates, if there was a sudden drop in general interest rates, and in three months' time, banks are only paying four percent, you know, you'll accept four percent. It'll be one over point zero four. The value would be two hundred. If interest rates fall, the market value will go up, and vice versa. And that's exactly what happens in real life. Exactly. Whenever the state announces lower interest rates, market values go up. When the state announces higher interest rates, market values go up. All right? However, that's too easy. Again, even if you're at all worried what I'm talking about arithmetically, we're back to my sister and monkeys. Where it becomes more fun, finally, is example. <laughs> It's good to have my sister doesn't visit very often. None of, none of you are going near her if she does. I don't want her to find out. Uh, but can you turn to example two, which is a bit more fun? It checks two things in one. Look at example two with me. E has in issue 6% debentures. Remember, 6% means means that the company will pay a fixed 6% interest on the nominal value. So each unit is guaranteed $6 a year. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. They're convertible in four years' time to 20 shares in the company. Well, I, this checks two things in one. First of all, be clear what we mean by convertible debt. It's quite simple, but convertible debt means that on repayment date, the investor has the choice of taking cash or fixed number of shares in the company. So my writing is not good, I'll say it again. But on repayment date, these are repayable, irredeemable. On repayment date, the people owning these uh, units will get a letter. They'll have to tick the box. And they'll have the choice of either taking cash, as would normally be the case, or having shares in the company. All right? They're told in advance they'll have that choice. But they don't decide until it comes time to repay it. All right? Look at the rest of the question with me. They're convertible in four years' time to 20 shares in the company. All right? Now, you're not going to make the decision today, but in four years' time you'll get a letter saying it's your choice either take cash or take 20 shares is that clear 
And of course, in four years' time when you get the letter, surely anybody in any sense will say, well, how much are the shares worth? If the shares are worth more, you'll tick the box and take shares. You agree? You don't need to keep them, you can sell them. On the other hand, if in four years' time the shares are worth less than the cash, you'll tick the cash box and you'll take cash. It's your choice. You don't decide until repayment date. Okay? Which makes them quite attractive. You know, you're guaranteed you'll get the cash. If shares are worth more, you'll get shares. If shares are worth less, you'll still get the cash. Right? Uh, it asks us, A, what is the market value of these debentures? Well, the market value at the moment is always based, look at what I wrote earlier, it's based on your future expected receipts. Tell me, please. Always do it on $100 nominal. First of all, let's work out what receipts we expect to receive. If you own one unit, first of all, you expect to get interest. How much interest will you be getting each year? The 6% debentures, and therefore you'll get a fixed $6 a year. You'll get $6 a year until, obviously, repayment. Here, repayment's in four years. And say it's $6 a year for years one to four. Everybody clear? However, in four years' time, you'll expect to be repaid... If these weren't convertible, then since there's no mention of a premium, you would expect to get $100 cash finished. Here, because they are convertible, what do you expect you're going to get? Surely, on repayment, you're either going to get cash, there's no mention of a premium, and so for a hundred dollars nominal, you'd get cash of a hundred. Or you'll get twenty shares. And if you look at the question, it says currently the share price is three dollar fifty. But it's expected to increase to $5.80 in four years. And so although anything could change over the next four years, at the moment, you'll be expecting that the 20 shares will be worth $5.80 each. And so at the moment, you're expecting the choice to be between 100 and... Is it 160? And therefore, obviously, although things might change, clearly... At the moment, surely you'll be expecting that you'll convert. It's going to be your choice. And therefore you're expecting to get 116. I keep saying, clearly things can change. The share price might be anything in four years. But today's value is based on today's expectations. Okay. Well, if that's what you expect, the market value will be the present value of your expectations at the required return. What's the required return? Uh, I've not typed it, have I? Oh, <laughs> shit. Could you add to the question? I'm awfully sorry. This isn't a, an exam problem. I forgot to type a line. As part of the question, please, could you add on investors required return is currently, uh, let's say, 8% per annum. 
I say that's part of the question he has to tell you. But at the moment, people are happy with 8% per annum. Could you all work out, therefore, what is the market value of one unit? Is that correct? Sorry, it's taking me a while, but it, I mean, it really is too important. And that's two things in one. Be clear what we mean by convertibles. They're very common in real life, and so they're fairly popular in the exam. You know, clearly you've no idea what will happen in four years, obviously. But if the share price is going up, you'll get more and more and more. You know? They're very attractive. The, market, the other thing, though, the market value is always based on the receipts you expect. There's no formula here, there's no quick way. If they're repayable, you've got to set out your receipts. Interest a year for four years, the repayment of either 100 or whatever. Discounted required return, I think my discount is correct. The market value today will be 105. Okay? I hope it goes without saying. If you came back next year and found you, then it could be completely different. Because obviously, if you came back next year, you've only then three years of interest to get. The repayment would be in three years, and by next year, you may be expecting different values. And of course, by next year, interest rates may have changed, the required return may be different. And so the market value you know, could be anything uh, next year. All right, three other things on this sheet, all of which have been asked reasonably regularly. Uh, the next bit, it says, what's the floor value? Uh, this is a bit less common, but all the floor value means... If I write down a definition... We're expecting at the moment that we will convert because we expect the share price to be higher. Clear? And as I've said, you know, come back tomorrow, you may be expecting the share price to be different, a different value and so on. But tell me, whatever happens in four years, what is the worst possible repayment? Say again. 100. Because remember, it's investor's choice. You'll either take cash, which is 100, or you'll take shares. So although the market value is based on what you expect, the worst that could ever happen here is that in four years' time you'll get cash of 100. Well, if he ever mentions the floor value, all the floor value is, it's what the market value would be if we took cash. Or, I think you know what I mean, it's the lowest possible market value. Now, I can't think of a better way of writing it. Day by day expectations change, but the worst possible repayment is a hundred. Well, it should take you ten seconds to have any more work to do. Could you work out the floor value? What would its value be? Okay. So that's something and nothing. Remember, the actual market value is 105. The floor value is 93. The reason the actual value is higher, of course, is because you're expecting the share price to have gone up a lot, and therefore that you'll be converted. All right? So we're almost there. Is that clear? 
All right, finally, two bits which really are more terminology than anything, but again, I'm afraid he does ask them quite often. Uh, for the same question, it says, what's the interest yield and what's the redemption yield? He asked these because they meant they're printed in newspapers. What the interest yield is, it's printed in newspapers, and what it's defined as being, well, sorry, I'll write the formula down, but tell me, if you buy these debentures, we all agree the market value is 105. So if you were buying them today on the stock exchange, you'd be having to pay 105 for a unit. How much interest would you be receiving each year on your unit? Six dollars. Well, all the interest yield is to help investors. You see, they look and they say, oh, the 6% debentures. But in fact, if you're having to pay 105, six a year isn't going to be 6%. And so the interest yield is the coupon rate divided by the market value. Now, by coupon rate, all I mean is, you see, on a $100 nominal, the interest each year, 6%, $6? To get $6 a year, you're having to pay, uh, was it 105? Point, whatever it came to, 13. And therefore, I hope you all see the logic. Although an ordinary person is going to think you're getting 6%, in fact, if you're paying 105, you're not getting 6% at all. You're actually getting, is it 5.7%? I say ask it because they print that in the papers. And I think you can see it's more useful for an investor. Why is it a chance to be missing? So only one more. Are we all clear there? Finally, redemption yield. Now again, I did say before, he cannot ask you for numbers for this. It's not hard, but any numbers are at P4. All he can expect here is that you can explain what redemption yield is. All right. Can somebody tell me, for these debentures here, if you buy it today, you'll pay 105. The interest each year, we've just seen, is effectively 5.7% return. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Why, in fact, in this particular one, are you actually expecting to get more than 5.7%? Why? Sorry? Yes. Because uh, you'll pay your 105. Year by year, you get $6, which is 5.7%. But of course, you're also expecting to get a nice profit on repayment. You'll pay 105 now. You're expecting that when it's repaid, it'll be worth 116. You agree? So in addition to your six dollars a year, your five point seven percent, you're expecting what you might call a little bonus of an extra eleven dollars. Do you all see my point? Yeah? No? Yes. So surely your overall return is in fact here a bit more than five point seven percent. He can't expect you to put a figure on it, but the redemption yield is the overall return per annum. And what I mean by the overall return, it's the interest, clearly 5.7% or whatever it was, plus any gain on repayment.
Now, it's not actually plus. The arithmetic's a bit more to it than that. But I think you see what I mean. It's only discussing it. Your overall return is the 5.7% plus this extra $11, you know. Pay 106, get back 117. You're all good, I'm talking about. In fact, you can think about this at home. You wouldn't ask you this in the exam. For this particular question, the overall return, in fact, is 8%. But I'm not really bothered. It's uh, all he expects. As I've said, this was exploring.